Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I wanted to dive into something that I've been playing with recently, and that is using ChatGPT to help do investment research and to identify different investments that you can make. Um, now, I've just really gotten started using ChatGPT and exploring the functions that it has. And currently I'm using the paid version, so ChatGPT 4.0, um, but um, you can use this with sort of any version of it. Um, this might have a little a bit more functionality than the one that's free, but this should give you just a general idea on how to approach using ChatGPT and other large language models um, for research in general and for sort of your um, investment portfolio. So like all large language models, I think it's kind of a black box. I found myself asking, what do I even do with ChatGPT? Um, but fortunately, because ChatGPT is um, so accessible in the sense that you can just ask it questions, I think it actually lends itself very easily to being a newbie to this and figuring out how to use it for your benefit. Um, so the first thing I would say is, as a first step, start by asking really broad questions. I'll go through what I did in this example of what I want to invest in in the year 2025. Um, so the first question I asked was, what are some investment strategies for 2025? Um, and ChatGPT immediately spit out a bunch of different things that I could think about um, when it comes to investing in the new year. Diversification across asset classes, thematic investing, dividend and value investing, geographic diversification, fixed income and yield optimization, um, dollar cost averaging, exposure to AI-driven investment tools, real estate and REITs, uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain, and finally, defensive investments for economic uncertainty. So, you know, it gives you sort of like the top 10 things you might want to think about. Um, and this will immediately just give you reference points. So what's great about ChatGPT and these other large language models is that they can help you discover what questions you don't even know. Um, so a lot of times, you know, when we're doing when we're doing research um, with, you know, traditional information, it can be really difficult to even know where to start. But with large language models, we can actually just ask open-ended questions and, and that will give us the tools to even begin to ask the questions that we want. Um, so that's what I would say to start is when you're researching anything pretty much, you can start by just asking, what should I know about this topic? Or what questions should I be asking about this topic? And immediately it's going to give you a really high level overview of things that you probably should know. Um, so that's to start. I would always say, go really broad and then narrow in on what you want to ask next. So as an example, they gave us 10 different things that we could think about going into 2025 when it comes to investing. Um, so I picked one of them and one of them was um, investing in value oriented stocks. Um, so dividend and value investing. And so what they said was with inflation moderating, dividend paying stocks and undervalued companies will offer stable returns. Um, so consider sectors like utilities, consumer staples, and financials. So, you know, as we looked at some of the different sectors over the last year, we saw that some of the more undervalued sectors were utilities, consumer staples, and financials. Um, similarly, to another point that it made, real estate is, is another example. Let's say we want to now drive into value stocks. Um, so the next question that I asked ChatGPT was, can you help me understand and identify value stocks in utilities, consumer staples, and financials? And it immediately started spitting out a bunch of information about this. Um, so it sort of started walking me through how to identify value stocks, the key metrics that go into it. Um, and it went over price to earnings ratios, price to book, dividend yield, debt levels, free cash flow, earnings stability. Um, and then after that, it started offering me sort of the metrics that I might use in each of these different sectors to evaluate these criteria. So, you know, PE can mean many different things in different sectors, but it identified both PE, dividend yield, and PB where they should be to be considered a value stock within each of these sectors, and they're different for each sector. So it did this for me for utilities, for consumer staples, and for financials. And it identified a few different companies in each of these sectors to invest in. Um, and so we kind of identified a lot of this already, um, but if we wanted to drive deeper, we can all of a sudden just ask the question to ChatGPT. 
Um, so after I had looked at all three of these sectors, I decided that I wanted to drive into utilities stocks. Um, so all I did was I asked, can you help me identify utility stocks that fall into the criteria for value? And those were the criteria that ChatGPT had outlined for me. And so what it spit out was a group of five different stocks that it had identified as meeting the criteria for value. Automatically, we had sort of already turbocharged the process of identifying stocks by, by just asking ChatGPT. Instead of, you know, going to a stock screener or uh, creating a, a watch list on any of the brokerage platforms where we had to decide what criteria we wanted to use, we very quickly um, asked ChatGPT what the criteria was and then to evaluate stocks based on that and identify certain ones. You know, sometimes it's it's really nice to be able to organize all this information. Um, so, you know, we know that PE ratios, dividend yields, and PB ratios are important, but we wanted to be able to compare them across the different stocks. So one thing that ChatGPT does fairly well is it organizes information across various uh, sources into single tables. So what I asked it to do is, could you organize these stocks into a table with PE ratio, dividend yield, and PB ratio? Um, and it immediately summarized it for me. Um, one thing to note is that I found that the perform I added performance in as one of the columns and I found that they weren't always completely accurate. So, you know, the one caveat on these large language models is that they're pulling information and they will generate that information regardless of whether it's accurate or not. Um, so it's always really important that when you're, when you're citing sort of any of the numbers that you're using to purchase securities or ETFs that you're double checking a lot of these numbers. Um, but for the most part, it's a good quick way to organize the information um, as a starting point. Um, so you can see that it did um, organize it into a chart for me, which was very helpful. Um, again, I wanted to go back through and check different, different metrics to make sure that they were correct. Um, and the good thing about the new ChatGPT 4.0 is that it does source a lot of um, its citations and where it's getting its information. So another sort of broad question that I asked it after I sort of had gone through this was how else can you help me with my investments in 2025? Um, and ChatGPT basically outlined 12 different ways that it could help me, um, including um, you know, portfolio analysis and diversification, investment screeners, um, scenario modeling and back testing, um, tax efficient investing, uh, goal oriented planning, ETFs and fund analysis. Um, so, you know, it can ask, it can offer you just a wide range of tools, um, to, to, to basically learning about any topic, including investments, um, and then implementing the strategies that you want to use. Um, so, you know, you can ask very specific questions as well. If, you know, your, if you have very specific needs, like you need to generate um, a certain amount of income or you want a certain percentage of your portfolio to be allocated to a certain company, it can help you sort of create a customized portfolio for you. Um, and so given sort of special needs, um, it can sort of start to customize different um, different advice for you. So another thing that I asked it was, what are some macroeconomic factors that will be at play in 2025? Um, and so it outlined a few different things that we should consider as we go into the new year. You know, it went into macroeconomic trends like global interest rates, inflation, economic growth, geopolitical tensions, um, labor markets and wage growth, energy markets, um, technology and AI. Um, and it basically just sort of outlines sort of key things to keep in mind as we move into the new year. So I asked it, what would be a portfolio of 10 ETFs that might outperform the market? And it sort of started identifying specific um, areas of focus, including, you know, a broad market exposure, growth and innovation, dividend and value ETFs, um, international and emerging markets, thematic ETFs. Um, and it outlined a portfolio for me of 10 different stocks that I could that I could um, use to create a portfolio that might outperform the market. Um, and it gave you reasons why this might be a good portfolio, including diversification, growth potential, defensive value and income, and then global opportunities. So it's really starting to think about how to position a portfolio um, for the current market trends.
Obviously, it would be interesting to see how this portfolio does at the end of the year um, compared to, say, just a regular S&P 500 portfolio. So that's something that might be kind of interesting to track um, over the over the over the course of the year. Um, but anyway, I think what's important to know about ChatGPT is that you can start really broad by asking what questions you should ask. So if you know that you have a topic that you want to learn about, you should start by just saying, like, what are the top 10 things that I should ask about? or know about this topic. And then from there, you can start to drill in, even having open question, open-ended questions with, within each of those different things that, that it suggests. Um, so what's really great is that you don't really need to know a lot or even know what you don't know um, when it comes to ChatGPT. You just have to know that you wanna learn about something. Um, and it can really guide you and help teach you what you need to ask and then what you need to know. Um, so yeah, this is a very simple explanation, but it's how I've been using ChatGPT lately. Um, and this sort of like approach can apply to sort of any topic that you want to research. So I hope you found it helpful and let me know if you start using ChatGPT for sort of any of your research.